What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next we are going to go over the top 25 comics in my collection, but there's a little twist on this based on a recent call-out from Alex the Comic Hoarder. Stay tuned. <music> All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So what this is, I'm gonna go over the top 25 comics in my collection, but there's a twist on this, like I said, from a recent video, uh, kind of like a call out that Alex the Comic Hoarder did. And so what it is, is it's your comics by grade. And so basically you're going through all the grades, 0.5 through 10, and there are 25 of them. Uh, and you're picking out your, your top or your favorite comic in that grade. And now also, uh, what he did in his videos, he had a few other books kind of that he was showing in those grades. So I've got some other ones as well that I'll go through. Uh, but a lot of people I've seen so far have had the challenges down in the lower grades. My collection lives <laughs> lives in the lower grades. Uh, it's like Bane. <laughs> you know? So, uh, so uh, I, I definitely don't have an issue with lower grade comics. So let's get into this. And so for the first one in the 0 0.5, I definitely have 0 0.5s. I have two of them that I was, I was struggling on which one I would pick. Uh, so the first one is Amazing Spider-Man number one, and it's a, a 0.5, but it's complete, which is one of the things I really like about it. It's one of, uh, I, I love this book. But the one that I decided to go with is Wonder Woman number one. Uh, they're both significant books, very significant books, but this one, I mean, just being that golden age, uh, first issue of Wonder Woman, I felt it, it trumped uh, The Amazing Spider-Man number one. So this is my, my .5 entry, Wonder Woman number one. Then for the, the 1 -0, had a couple, but I just I decided on one, and this is Batman number 62. And it's just this incredible Catwoman cover where she's chucking cats, <laughs> it looks like to me, at Batman and Robin. And I've just, I've always liked this one and I just happen to have it in a very low grade. So have the 1-0 uh, the of this one. So this is my 1-0 entry. All right, then for the 1.5, I've got a couple in this one too. The first one that I was considering was Batman number 37. I'm just, I am a sucker for the Joker covers, uh, but I decided I have a book I picked up recently uh, that was a, a little more significant, kind of like historically significant, so I decided to go with that one, and that is War Against Crime number 10. And so this is the first appearance of the Vault Keeper in the Vault of Horror. Uh, I unboxed this one very recently. I also recently got a copy of the uh, of Vault of Horror number 12, which is the first title when it changes the title to Vault of Horror. And so this is a significant issue for pre-code horror from the uh, from the golden age, so this is my entry for, for 1.5. Now, 1.8, I have a bunch of them. For whatever reason, I seem to come across a lot of 1.8s, and so, and it's where a lot of the books I love are. I actually left out a number of them as well, because it's just, it was hard for me to choose, but I didn't want it to be like all 1.8s. So, first one is this Batman number 42. This is the first time Catwoman appears on the cover of the Batman run. Uh, love this book that you might recognize this one from my uh, video about having the book shipped in a padded envelope. <laughs> it came in a padded envelope and it was probably the worst shipping job I ever had. Uh, the second one that I was considering was Wonder Woman number six. Uh, this is the first appearance of Cheetah. I love this cover. I actually like this book, I think, more than Wonder Woman one. Uh, it's so tough to have first appearances in the Golden Age and first appearances on cover. Uh, so I do really love this book. That one wasn't the one I picked either. Then I've got Suspense Comics number 11. Uh, this is my, uh, arguably my favorite issue from this run that I own. Uh, if I had a three, that would be, that would be the one. But uh, this is this classic I'll Be Cold Devil cover. This, uh, I really love this book. This is one of the first books that really got me into the Golden Age and to, into L.B. B. Cole. Um, but not that one either. Then uh, Seven Seas number six. Uh, so this is a Matt Baker cover, just a classic good girl art cover that he has drawn. One of uh, he's just he's so famous for drawing uh, these these covers. And this is my favorite book that I have from Matt Baker. But this was not the one that made the cut because I have a lot of 1.8s. 
and the last one this is my this is my entry for the 1.8 and it is startling terror tales number 11 another lb cole cover but this one is just he's taken the the gruesome factor up you know up to 11 you've got the spot the his uh, classic spider with the skull head and you know 1.8 but a just a, a cool copy and it has this kind of like fading and stuff on it but i still i think it looks incredible so this is my entry for 1.8 and for 2.0, shockingly, I just have one book to, to go over, and this is Crime Suspense Stories number 22. Uh, this is a Johnny Craig cover. This is this classic beheading cover, one of the covers that has, you know, played a big role in the Comics Code Authority being established just because this is it's such a brutal cover. I mean, just think about this one being in the 50s, being on newsstands for little kids. Uh, so, so that was, so yes, yeah, so Crime Suspense Stories number 22 is my entry for... A 2-0. All right, now 2-5 is another area that I have a pretty deep roster. <laughs> so uh, the first one I was considering was Batman number 59. So this is the first appearance of Deadshot. And if you can tell, this cover looks very similar uh, to that Batman 62. And uh, so this is, I just, I think they're like a pair that go together. And so first appearance of Deadshot, really like this one, but it's not the one that I ended up going with. Next one here uh, in the Silver Age, this is Amazing Spider-Man number 14. Uh, this is a book I showed in a recent unboxing that I'm, I'm probably actually, I'm hoping it can get up to maybe a three or a three five uh, that I'm gonna plan on sending in. But uh, so first appearance of Green Goblin, just one of Spider-Man's biggest villains. So had to include this one in consideration. Uh, the next one is National Comics number one. And this is the first appearance of Uncle Sam in comics. So I just think that's a cool little like fact for this one. So uh, it's just such a rare book to come across and just, <laughs> I just love the cover where the little kid's beating up that guy. I just think it's so funny. It sucks to be that guy. You know, one guy's fighting Uncle Sam, the other one's getting beaten up by a tiny boy. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so this, uh, this was one of the other ones I was considering for the, the two five, but the one that I went with, there's a run of books that I have been trying to put together. This is one of them. This is Famous Funnies number 212. And so this is a classic Frank Frazetta cover. And you've got uh, Buck Rogers, you know, saving the, the woman in the red dress on the cover. Nice looking 2.5. I mean, there's a little chip down in the corner, but a, a nice looking copy. There's some, I have a much worse looking copy of this book <laughs> as well that's ungraded. Um, but but yeah, so anything that, that looks presentable with this Famous Funnies run, I'm always, always happy with. So this is my entry for the 2.5 Famous Funnies 212. Then for the 3.0, I think I've got a few as well. This is a tough one because Flash 104 is one of my favorite comics. I, I really love this book. Uh, it's just, I'm not a huge fan of Golden Age Flash, but I like the, the Hawkman cover, the red cover. I just think this one looks incredible and it's super rare. It's the last book from the Flash run. And just like you have with modern books, the, there are lower print runs when you get the, uh, uh, the last issue. So this is one of them that I was considering then Batman 23, another classic Joker cover. Uh, also a White Pages copy, which I think is crazy for 1944. Uh, but this was also on the list, but is not the one I picked. The one I picked is another book from that run I was just talking about. And this is Famous Funnies number 214. And this is my favorite issue from that Frazetta run. Uh, it's just, I love the Red Planet. You can tell I like red covers. Love the Red Planet, it's got that sci-fi aspect to it. 1954, just awesome Frazetta cover. You've got, you know, the Frazetta insignia, kind of their signature there. So this is my entry for the 3.0 Famous Funnies number 214. All right, now the 3.5, just two books. Uh, first one, this is a, a book I picked up recently. This is More Fun Comics number 74. So it's this Dr. Fate cover, 1941, but the big thing is this is the second appearance of Aquaman, the second appearance of Green Arrow, and the second appearance of Speedy. So uh, it is a, a pretty big key in the grand scheme of things. You don't have those Golden Age first appearances all that often and second appearances. And so more fun 73, obviously that's the real big book, but uh, happy to have this one and just a, a cool Dr. Fate cover. But the book that is the one that, that makes my, my cut, even though probably not as expensive as that one because these are you know it's about my my favorite ones this is one of the, my favorite books in my entire collection and this is batman 
number nine. And this is the first time they do this spotlight cover. I just, I, I love this book. It's got this cool black background. It's not a campy cover in any way. You know, it's just a, you know, you've got Batman and Robin, 1942, and a 3.5, a very presentable grade for this book. So, yeah, and just, you know, the ads on these are just, they're so, I mean, they're so detailed and everything. I was, I, I love that. So, very cool book, Batman number nine. This is my entry for the 3.5. All right, now for the 4.0, got a, a few in here. First one is Rangers Comics number 14. This is this World War II, just kind of like a <laughs> brutal beheading cover. Uh, I was shocked when I was able to pick this book up because this is a very rare book. It does not come up for sale very often. So I was very happy to, to add this book to the collection. This is not the one I went with though. Uh, the next book also, this, in terms of value, this is probably the most valuable one, but well, not probably. This is the most valuable one, but it's not the one I ended up picking. This is Avengers number one. You know, first appearance of the Avengers team. Classic cover of them battling Loki. Uh, but this is not the book I chose. The book I chose, and this was also one of uh, Alex, the Comic Quarter's books. I think he has a 5-0, though. And this is Archie Comics number 50. It's this classic Betty cover. I think possibly the best Archie cover that, that's out there. And I just... I've, I've keep trying to upgrade this book. I've had a two, I think a three, and now a, and then I got this four. And so I'll keep trying to upgrade this one. Uh, this is definitely one of my, my keeper books. And so Archie, number 50, classic Betty cover is my entry for the 4.0. All right, now the 4.5, I've got a couple pre-code horror books in here. First one that I was considering was Blue Bolt, number 14. Uh, this is a L.B. Cole zombie, underwater zombie cover. Just awesome colors on this one. You've got this, uh, if you don't notice, this like shark in the background back here that just looks really cool. Just the, you know, just one of L.B. Cole's great covers. Uh, this entire run has some really incredible covers for him. Uh, but that is not the one that I ended up picking. The one I picked, and this is just, it's just such a rare book. Uh, I, I just had to go with this one. This is Punch Comics number 11. Now it's not the, you know, number 12 is the big book, but you've also, you got a skull on this one, which is pretty cool and like, you know, the skeleton hand. Um, but Punch Comics number 11, a 4.5, really, you know, nice looking book, especially with this, this black cover, just super presentable book. So very happy with this one. Love this, this uh, pre-code horror stuff. You know, this is early, 1944. So that's really early in the, the horror kind of genre. And uh, so this is my entry for the 4.5, Punch Comics 11. 5-0. Got a few books here. Uh, first one is Detective Comics number 85. Uh, this is a uh, just a, a cool Joker cover. You know, you can tell I, I like the Joker covers. They make they appear on my cons my consideration lists uh, quite a bit. So just a beautiful grade for this. A 5-0 from 1944. Uh, but that is not the one that I picked. The other one, another one I was considering was a book I recently showed that I picked up was Amazing Spider-Man number 15, which is the first appearance of Craven, but also signed by Stan Lee. Just a, you know, a beautiful copy. And, I, and I've said, this is not a book to sleep on. If, uh, like we've seen with uh, Amazing Spider-Man 101, even though people don't think the movie is gonna be great with Morbius, that book has just gone through the roof recently. So I would expect something probably pretty similar with Craven when the uh, Craven movie eventually comes out. But the one that I picked for the 5-0 was X-Men number four. And this is a, a white pages copy and just a beautiful copy of this book. It has a, a very light subscription crease on the front. It's more pronounced on the back. You can see it or not, but uh, I can't really see it there. But regardless, just a, a beautiful copy for a 5-0, white pages. I love this cover. Second appearance of Magneto, first appearance of Scarlet Witch, first appearance of Quicksilver. Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, all that kind of stuff. Just a classic Kirby cover, early X-Men. I mean, I, I, like you saw with those Batman books, I really like these kind of like starburst or whatever you want to call them, like orange to red covers. And so this is my entry for the 5-0 X-Men number four. Now for 5-5, I've got another book from that Famous Funnies run, but it is not the one that I ended up picking. This is Famous Funnies number 209. Uh, this is actually the book that kicks off the run. Um, it doesn't have quite the sci-fi feel that the other ones have, and that's why this one isn't one of my, my favorites from it, but I, it is the first book from that run with Frank Frazetta, and still you've got him saving, you know, saving the girl on the front cover. 5.5 five is just a, a beautiful grade 
for, for this book from 1953. But the book that I went with was Detective Comics number 359. So this is the first appearance of Barbara Gordon as Batgirl, and I just, I, I love this cover. I love the purple cover. I love that kind of like halo or hazing effect that, that's around her. I think it just looks incredible. I've got a couple other copies that I'm hoping might grade higher. I, I think they're probably gonna end up being the same, probably gonna be that 5.5, five, but I uh, really like this book. Always kind of like looking to see if I can upgrade this one, but my entry for the 5.5 five is Detective Comics number 359, first appearance of Barbara Gordon as Batgirl. Now for 6.0, I, I wish one of these wasn't you know this great. I wish it was higher or lower, just so then I could use it in another uh, one of the other uh, choices, but the first one I considered was All Select Comics number nine. Uh, which is just a beautiful Alex Schomburg cover with Captain America, Human Torch, Bucky. I think this is the only Alex Schomburg cap cover that I that I have. Uh, so 1945, it's World War II era, but not World War II content, more sci-fi content. But that is not the one that I picked. Another one that I was considering was Werewolf by Night, number 32. So First Prince of Moon Knight, just one of the hottest books on the planet right now. Uh, you know, just incredible cover. You know, purple background, which I always like, and uh, you know him battling werewolf by night. But this is not the one I picked. The one I picked, and I mean, it really wasn't a choice for me. This this had to be it. This is, to me, one of the the most incredible books that I'm I'm happy to own. And this is Marvel Mystery Comics number seven, in a CGC six O, and this is an Alex Schomburg, early Alex Schomburg cover. This is the third Human Torch cover, second cover by Alex Schomburg with the Human Torch. You've got the uh, good girl bondage type cover, Human Torch melting through the wall. I, I talked to one of my friends and I said I've, I've always wanted to get one of these covers with the Human Torch melting through a wall. And so this is a pretty pretty incredible one to, to have the opportunity to have. So colors are incredible. Uh, this is definitely my entry for the 6-0 Marvel Mystery Comics number seven. All right, now the 6-5, got a couple here. Got X-Men number 12. I mean, it's just one of those early classic Kirby covers with Juggernaut wrecking the X-Men. This is not the book that I picked. Uh, then I've got this awesome Golden Age book. Also not the one I picked, but this one was a close consideration. This is Fight Comics number 40. You've got the Good Girl Art bondage type cover. I believe this is a Joe Doolin cover. You've got the uh, you know the skull with the diamonds in the eyes. You've got the the Nazi symbolism from the World War II era. You know, kind of like evil Nazi torturing you know this woman or all that kind of stuff. So, uh, just an incredible cover. You know, rare book. Another one, and this was the one I thought I was going to pick, but I ended up changing my mind. Uh, this is Marvel Spotlight number five, uh, with this is first appearance of Ghost Rider signed by Roy Thomas. Uh, but yeah, just a tough book to get in even mid mid grades now it's just it's getting really pricey and it just it shows damage so much uh, but this isn't the one I picked the one I picked was a book that I picked up very recently and I uh, got this from Polanski CC on uh, on Instagram and this is punch comics number 19 and CGC 6.5 so just a beautiful book and you can see it's slightly brittle pages which is why it's at 6.5 because this book is incredible <laughs> like like this book looks almost like it's like an eight you know maybe i mean eight eight five i mean it's just it is an incredible book but you you finally start getting the uh the page quality starts hurting the the grade at, at some point but so you've got this you know pre-code horror book super early 1946 the the bloody claws coming out from the sky um you know and then the you, know, you got the baby ruth ad <laughs> on the back uh, but this is my entry for for the six five punch comics number nineteen. Yeah, so it's interesting because they you know they start to get more and more modern as you get higher up in these grades. So it's just kind of fun watching the transition in the books. Because now we're on to the seven zero. First book that I was considering was Silver Surfer number four. Uh, this is just this classic Silver Surfer Thor cover. Um, just nothing really key about it other than the fact that people love the cover, including myself arguably one of the best cover covers of the Silver Age, but this is not the one that I picked. Uh, the other one uh, that I was considering was this book that I mentioned earlier, Vault of Horror, number 12. 
It is a restored 7.0, so I'm sure it wouldn't get a 7.0 if it was universal, but it's still 7.0 on that label. So this is one that I was considering. This is the first issue in the Vault of Horror run. Like I said, the War Against Crime was the first appearance of the Vault of Horror and the Vault Keeper, but it transitioned to this title two issues later. And it's just this uh, crazy kind of like stretcher type cover. Um, but yeah, not a good time for that guy. But this book, it's super rare, especially tough to get in a nice presenting condition. But the book that I ended up going with is it's just one of my my favorite covers again the purple covers they they, they get me uh, so this is house of secrets number 92 with the cgc 70 this is the first appearance of swamp thing and the other thing i love about this book is that it's just it presents like an 885 it's just a, a beautiful book uh, very like just like a couple spine ticks and a little i think corner crease up here but it has a lot of tanning. So this was the book that I used in my video I did a while ago about how the tanning can really affect your grade. And so, um, but yeah, just a, a beautiful copy of this. Uh, House Secrets 92, First Appearance of Swamp Thing is my submission for the 7-0. All right, now for the 7-5, uh, it was a given which one for me I was gonna pick, but I, but I had a, a couple cool books to show in the 7-5. So first one was Captain America 100, which is kind of like, the first issue of the Silver Age Captain America, kind of like the number one for Iron Man, Submariner, that kind of thing. Um, but the cool thing about this one is it's signed by Stan Lee, right on the shield, which I've always thought is really cool. Just a great signature placement and a key book that he was still working on at the time. So I think that's fun that that signature's on there. Next one is more of like on here just because of like speculation. <laughs> so uh, this was Journey into Mystery Annual number one in a 7.5. This is the first appearance of Hercules and Zeus, who many have been speculating are going to both appear in the next Thor Love and Thunder movie and a uh, very tough book to get in higher grades like this so just uh just yeah cool book because of the you know square bound it often gets you know split spines all that kind of thing but the book that I had to pick uh and this is because this is one I keep trying to upgrade again like uh like I do with some of the books that are really on my my like keepers type list this is giant size x-men Number one, uh, with the CGC 7.5, it is crazy what this book has done <laughs> over the last about year, year and a half. I remember I was telling someone in, in 2020, I was bidding on one of these in an auction and it was a 9.6 and that 9.6 got to like $4,600 and I was like, ugh, it's too much. <laughs> it was 9.6 I think is like 20,000 now. So just incredible what these, these books have, have done. Um, but this is the first appearance of the new X-Men, you know, the main ones, Storm, Colossus, and Nightcrawler. Then you've got the second full appearance of Wolverine. So just incredible book, a key book, I think, that you should really be trying to pick up uh, before they ultimately do appear in the MCU, because it's going to happen. So my submission for the 7.5 is Giant Size X-Men number one. Now for the 8 -0, I'm surprisingly a little light in the, the 8 uh, ones, but I do have a couple cool books from there. Uh, the first one was Captain America number 117. So this is the first appearance of the Falcon. It's a white pages copy, which I think is a nice little extra with this book. But beautiful copy of this. I mean, I, I think this is a book that's surprising to me that it's gotten cheaper because we know we're going to see this character again. So definitely a book that I would think is worthwhile to pick up if you see them on kind of like on the cheap. But the book that... I had to go with, and yes, it is a qualified label, but I don't care. It's still, it's my 8 and this is Incredible Hulk, number 181, and it's the first appearance of Wolverine, well, first full appearance of Wolverine, so I don't get, you know, hate messages, uh, but on the cover, incredible classic cover, this one is missing the Marvel value stamp. That's why it's the, the green label, um, but yeah, another book that I want to keep trying to upgrade, but it is just, it's so expensive now. Even qualifieds are super expensive. So a uh, tough book to upgrade <laughs> without spending a ton of money. Um, but uh, but this is my entry for the 8 Incredible Hulk number 181. All right. Now 8-5, I, ha I have a few, but again, for, for me, it was, gonna, it was a given on the one that I was definitely gonna pick. Uh, but one that was a strong consideration was X-Men number 14. So first appearance of the Sentinels and just, I'm surprised that this book doesn't cost more than issue 12 because Sentinels to me for the X-Men are way more significant than Juggernaut. I mean, like 
especially if you're from like my age, you know, where you grew up watching the cartoon and they were like battling the Sentinels like every other week. And so like the Sentinels, I feel like are, are undervalued right now. If I, so I do really, I, I love the Sentinels books, but eight five for this one, is just a, a beautiful copy. It's another one of these red covers. Really like this one, uh, but it's not the one that I picked. The next one, if it was a different grade, this one definitely would have been my choice, but this is Rangers Comics number 40. And so now it's not something that's overly significant about this book, this issue, but this is from the, uh, if you've seen me talk about it before, the Okajima Pedigree. And so the Okajima Pedigree is from, uh, it was a, a woman that was collecting these, these books and was in one of the Japanese internment camps in the United States uh, during World War II. And so it, to me, it's the most historically significant pedigree that's out there. I, I think it's it's an incredible pedigree, uh, very historically important pedigree. And so uh, I'm just, I'm happy to have one book from that. And uh, so, so yeah, so this is my, my 8.5 uh, copy of, of that. But the one that I went with, this, I mean, it, it's just because this is basically, I mean, in the, probably the top five of my favorite books in my entire collection. And so this is Fantastic Four, number 49. And so this is the first full appearance of Galactus, first cover appearance of Galactus and Silver Surfer, second appearance of Silver Surfer. This is my favorite cover from that, that three-part trilogy. I love this cover. <laughs> and I had been hoping I could keep upgrading it, but then when the prices went through the roof, the and it went getting into a nine then got really, really expensive. Uh, so I don't know if I'll, I'll get out of an 8.5, but uh, happy to have picked this one up before the comic prices spiked because uh, it's, I, I love this copy. It is just an incredible copy of this book. The only real flaw on it is like this little light crease up in the corner there. Otherwise, it is just a, a beautiful copy of this book. So this is my entry for the 8.5 Fantastic Four number 49. Now for the 9.0, if I was going on value, it would definitely be this book, but this is not the one that ended up uh, winning my, my choice. This is Incredible Hulk number 180. And so 9-0, this is the first appearance, first cameo appearance of, uh, of Wolverine. You see him on that last splash page. Um, but, uh, but yeah, just incredible book from that run. You know, you've got the trilogy 180, 181, and 182. And so this is the start of that. First time you ever see Wolverine in, in the comics. Um, but the one that I went with, because this is another one of those, just one of my absolute favorite books that I, that I own. And this is Batman number 251. So this is this classic Joker cover, classic Neil Adams Joker cover. And I, I, I want to try to upgrade this one at some point, but I just, I, I haven't been able to do it yet. But 9-0. Again, really happy with this book. It's just such a cool book. It, it is somewhat of a key because it's the turning point with Joker when he becomes much more evil instead of like a gangster clown type character. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is my entry for the 9-0, Batman number 251. All right, so as we are shifting into these higher grades, again, book's getting a little more modern. Uh, so first one that I was considering, there are two books in the 9-2. I'm surprised actually with the one that I decided to pick because I thought it was going to be this one. And this is Iron Man number 55, white pages copy, first appearance of a bunch of characters, including the most important one to me, Thanos, uh, just one of my favorite characters from when I was a kid. And it's because I grew up with the the Infinity Gauntlet, uh, the Infinity Crossover, the Thanos Quest, those those books, and I, I those are the ones I, I, just, I loved when I was a kid. Uh, so first appearance of Thanos, this is another book that I've been gradually upgrading and just happy to uh, be up at this 9-2 copy, but Shockingly, the one that I ended up picking, the reason is because I haven't been able to, like the way I've looked at it, I have not been able to sell this book. It's just such an awesome, just incredible cover, especially in the, in the condition that it's in. And this is Submariner number one, and it's a, a 9-2 white pages as well. But this one is just like the blues on this copy, the red on this copy is just, it just pops. It's incredible. And then it's one of those books that when you start to look into the, the background and the detail, just such, such great detail. And it's just like Iron Man number one, very similar, where it has all this extra detail in the background. These, uh, you know, Bushema drew some awesome detailed covers, some great covers, some of my favorites that are out there. 
And so this was the one that ended up, I ended up picking as my submission for the 9-2, Submariner, number one. And if we do end up seeing him in the MCU, another book that it's come down a little bit since the speculation earlier this year, um, but I would expect this one is gonna pop right back up again. I mean, we've already been seeing it go up a little more again, but uh, a book that I would definitely be on the lookout for. All right, now for the nine fours. First one, just had to put it in here to complete that trilogy, and this is Incredible Hulk number 182. So this is the second cameo appearance of Wolverine, basically just like in 180, he appears on the first page and then he's gone for the rest of the story. Um, but this was not the one that I ended up picking. The one that I went with was just because it's a Silver Age book, an early Silver Age book in a 9-4, which just blows my mind. <laughs> and uh, this is Avengers number 10, which is the first appearance of Immortus, who is one of the later iterations of Kang. And so uh, I just, I mean, a 9-4 to me is just, is ridiculous. 1964, you know, and, and to have a copy that survived that long in this condition, the 9-4 to me is just, just crazy. So this is the one that I ended up picking. This is my submission for the 9.4 Avengers number 10. Now for the 9-6, there were a couple that, that I was considering, but I was pretty sure I knew which one I was gonna, gonna pick for this. First one I was looking at was Batman Adventures number 12. First appearance of Harley Quinn. Uh, this book, again, is another one that's just gotten crazy, especially in the really high grades, like a 9.8 is like four grand now or something. So uh, just incredible book. Uh, I think it's just a cool cover, like the cartoony type cover from basically like what we most of the people my age were watching with the Batman cartoon when we were kids. Uh, but first appearance Harley Quinn, that is not the one that I went with. Uh, the other one I was considering just because it's so difficult to get in this condition um, was Mr. Miracle number four. And so this is the first appearance of Big Barda. And just this book, it's this, like it's a, th these books are thicker. They're very hard to get in really high grade. And so just nine, nine six is just an incredible copy for this book. So definitely one that I, that I had to consider, but the one that I went with was the book that I have been just gradually upgrading over the last few years. And that is X-Men number 101. And so this is the first appearance of Phoenix. This is arguably for me, my favorite cover of all time. I love this cover. I just, I like the colors, the blue on the yellow, Phoenix just right on the front, you know, just like similar feel to the scene from the, the X-Men movie when she was saving them all from the water. I just, I, I love this book. And Phoenix has been used just so much since then. It's just such an integral character to the X-Men storyline and just Marvel in general. And so, uh, this one, it's just, it's not just the, the grade, it's also, you know, I don't usually worry too much about things like centering and that kind of thing, but the centering on this one is incredible. It's white pages. And with this era of Marvel, when they've got this like banner on the top, the centering really matters. You know, you, you get kind of like some some weird looking books when they're when they're off center and they're not the wrap isn't great. Uh, but yeah, really happy with this one. A very square looking copy. So, X Men One Hundred One, my my submission for the the nine six. Then the nine eight, the four books that I was looking at for this one. So this is uh, the first one, just partly because it is just ridiculous that these books even exist. So first one is Journey into Mystery, number 83, and a 9-8. This is the Golden Records reprint. Now, this reprint was from 1966. So, so yeah, it's a reprint, but it is 56 years old. You know, this is a 9-8 from 1966, and just these uh, Golden Records reprints have been getting quite a bit more expensive lately, especially in the high grades. And so just nine, eight white pages copy of this book to me is just, it's insane. And it's, it's beautiful. I mean, I've taken a really close look at this one. It is a, it is a beautiful copy, but it's not the one that I ended up picking. Another one I was considering just because of the significance of this character now is New Mutants 98 and a nine, eight newsstand first appearance of Deadpool much tougher book to get with that newsstand because I mean this there's a ton of these out there but in the newsstand not nearly as many because this is pretty late in that transition it's 1991 definitely a lot more direct editions than newsstands at this point 
And so uh, this is one that I was definitely considering. The next one, this was another book that I, I was working up on that I, I upgraded over time. And so I was happy to finally get this one in a 9.8. This is NYX number three. This is this, uh, just, I think it's an awesome Josh Milton cover. I know some people like uh, four better, uh, but I, I like this one better. I think it's just, it's a, it's a creepy cool cover. I really like the style on this one, but uh, this is the first appearance of X-23 and with Wolverine, the, the characters tied to Wolverine. I just think that you can't really go wrong with picking up this book and was very happy to get it in a 9.8. Um, so that one was definitely in the running, but the book that I ended up going with was X-Men number 129. So this is the first appearance of Kitty Pride, the first appearance of Sebastian Shaw, the first appearance of the Hellfire Club, and the first appearance of Emma Frost. I love multi-key issues, and this one is a huge multi-key. Unfortunately, none of them are on the cover. Still, it's an awesome Wolverine, Colossus, and Storm battle cover. And, you know, th these are characters that I expect we will probably end up seeing again. Uh, just, I think Kitty Pride has, they, they have some cool things that they could end up doing with her in the MCU. They, they've used her a lot in more recent storylines, and so I think that could be a great way to, to use that character. Maybe we won't get the Hellfire Club, I don't know. Uh, we've already kind of seen that group um, with uh, Sebastian Shaw and Emma Frost in um, X-Men First Class, but uh, Emma, Emma Frost is just a fan favorite character, and then you've got Kitty Pride, who I think could just be a real badass if they do her right in the MCU. Uh, so this is my entry for the 9.8 X-Men number 129, first appearance of Emma Frost, Kitty Pride, Sebastian Shaw, and the Hellfire Club. Now, sadly, I don't have a 9.9 or a 10, and so it's actually the top 23 books in my collection by grade. I couldn't fill out those last two slots. I have never owned a 9.9, I have never owned a 10, um, but maybe someday, but I've just, I've never had that, uh, that drive to go after one of those especially since I'm generally not buying super modern books. And so if you have a 9.9 or a 10 in something that's a little older, even just 20 years old, they get really, really expensive, <laughs> really, really quick. Uh, so not something that I, I've personally gone after, but I had 23 or 25. So I think I did pretty good filling those out. I got 23 out of the 25 grades. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. To me, it's, it's a lot of fun going through these because a lot of times, you know, you don't seal your books out all the time. I try to, I change the ones out on my shelf uh, every once in a while so that I can kind of like cycle through and see different books. Uh, but still, it, I mean, you don't get to see everything every day. So it's fun bringing them all out and, and uh, showing them, talking about them. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to see more content like this, I've got more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.